thanks for bringing this lovely example in. Uh, my um, pleasure. It was Andy that, for those of you that follow our series, um, has a pretty rad 944 himself. And, um, and I said to him I wanted to get more transactional cars, and he was like, I've got just the car for you, just the right one. So here we are, and I'm looking to find out why Andy was so excited about this car. Yeah, well, uh, as I said, uh, it was my, my fault that he ended up in a 944 as well. So, uh, was it? Yeah, and we're still friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you advised so, him well then? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. But, um, but yeah, I mean, where, where do I start with this? Um, funny enough, I hope it's not a swear word, but I was actually into Lotuses. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I had a couple of hot Elises, yeah. um, which, you know, they're very good at racking up points on the license. Are they? So I got rid of those, and I just fancied something a bit older and a bit more classic, uh -huh. and I've always loved the shape of a 944. Mm. I mean, 911's mm. great, but I just wanted something a bit different. Mm. So I've always fancied something a bit more classic, um, something that's still fun to drive, but perhaps, you know, not as much of a rocket jump as a, as a, mm. as a fast Elise. And something that's got two seats in the back as well, because when the little ones came along, um, this is even a bit more practical than the least, not much, but mm -hmm. it is a bit more practical. And I've yeah. always liked the Porsche brand, and I had a plan of, um, I wanted something that I could kind of make my own, mm -hmm. something that looks a bit more classical, um, front engines, and something I could, period sort of race car-ish, was, was where I wanted to end up. Mm -hmm. So... Um, this I bought from a, well, a specialist, 944 specialist, mm -hmm. apparently. So um, just, just quickly, just jumping back, just jumping back a step. Um, it's interesting that you're, you're a Lotus man. So basically, what does, what, does, what does a Lotus man appreciate? Is it balance? Because to me, from my understanding, the, the appeal of Lotus is always about balance. It's all about chassis dynamics. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're beautifully balanced cars. Yeah. But, you know, great for a track day and nothing else, really. Really? They're, they're so impractical. There's just, yeah, yeah. There's just no room to put anything in. They smell of glue. They, you know, they're made of plastic. They, they don't, you know, there's, there's not really a lot else you can do sure. apart from drive around a track with it. Mm. Whereas something like this, you know, it's got a, a lot of usability. It's a lot of practicality. Mm -hmm. We go on camping trips. So now you can get a huge amount of stuff in the boot until I put the scaffolding in. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, they're very practical cars. But do you think that this being a transaxle car, you know, a traditional kind of layout, it makes it a very balanced car. I mean, the one thing that people have always said it's about these is how balanced they are. And do you think that's yeah. why, as a Lotus man, you were looking for something, who, as, so. as a Lotus man who appreciates balance, were you looking for another car that had re was known for having really good balance? I think so, yeah. And I've, I've probably been spoiled um, yeah. in that way because, you know, I've kind of used to driving a car like that. Um, mm. This is a lot more readable as well on a track. Is it? It kind of communicates to you before you have a problem. More yeah. readable than the Lotus? Yeah, because it's mid-engine. You'd just be off spinning somewhere. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. okay, I'm okay. I'm not okay. Interesting. <laughs> but, yeah, 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 yeah. But this, you know, it tells you and telegraphs you before it's going to be... So more progressive. Yeah. You kind yeah. of roll into the limit as opposed to it just snapping. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Really so, interesting. yeah, I did manage a 720 at Bedford in the Lotus. <laughs> Right, right, wow, okay. <laughs> Which was quite exciting, yeah, yeah, the marshals yeah. weren't as appreciative. <laughs> um, okay. I think I got like a 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, but yeah. Was that right. a black number 10 on a black flag? It was, was it? yeah, because I did the decibel <laughs> meter as well. Oh, did um, you? Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. so this, this anyway. you're right, it's, you, they do, you know, the, the, as we know, the gearbox at the back, mm. the weight distribution's great. They, mm. they handle really, really well, you know, and I think they still surprise a lot of people on track days. Mm. Um, of how quick they are actually still through the corners if they're properly set up. Um, well, they've always been known as the thinking man's Porsche, really, I think. I don't um, know why I got one then, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but well, you'll just have to take the, uh, the compliment. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay. but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, what I like about it is it's just totally analogue. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is an early car, so it's got powered nothing. So it's totally manual rack, um, you know, no brake assist or anything to so, say, mm. you know, it's you in the car. If you do mm. something wrong, it's your fault. Mm. So, you know, and the, the feedback of that, I just find that a hell of a lot more rewarding experience, particularly on a track, you know, you know, where you might have a Golf R or something. It's mainly the car doing the driving, whereas mm. this, it's, it's, it's you. Mm. So, yeah. So and Andy found that out when he got four wheels on the grass once <laughs> at, uh, I think we were doing about 110 Shit. down the back straight at Goodwood. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, Goodwood, there's no runoff. No. There so isn't. that must have been butt clenching, really. 
Yeah, I was in the passenger seat at the time. Oh so no, of like, your own car as well? Yeah, yeah, so it's like, go that way a bit. And who was driving? Andy. So, was it Andy? Yeah, it was, yeah. See, so, see, I'm surprised you're still friends with him now. <laughs> After yeah, that, he was looking behind him and he sort of drifted off and we had all four wheels on the grass and I was like, it was, this is going to end badly. Hence why uh -huh. I've put the scaffolding in there. Oh, that was, so, we, so this cage, technically speaking, is Andy spec. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, <laughs> so this was a, a, a direct response to that day with Andy. Yeah, yeah, I just thought... I'm going to tease him about that from now on. Now. So what, one day, you know, if, if I ever, you know, went off and the wheels dug in, it was going to be a, mm. a bad day for everybody. So that's why... Yeah, we did, yeah. <laughs> we did that. That's why we've got the anti-spec cage. Yeah. And okay, so you were telling me before I rudely interrupted you that um, you found the car with a poor specialist, with a kind of poor specialist, you said? Yeah, I mean, he, he advertised as a 944 specialist. So I thought, right, I don't know anything about these cars. That would be somewhere to go. 944 special? Yeah, but I think he taught himself. Um, so, you know, the car I ended up buying wasn't exactly what I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> so I wanted a rolling resto. Um, but it, it was more of a skip on wheels uh, when, when I got hold of it. Really? Yeah. So okay, I so how bad was much. it? Oh, uh, yeah, it was, it was bad. Yeah. Um, but I kind of liked that. I wanted the challenge of it. Mm. Um, I mean, I've had it a while now. I mean, it's not perfect, but um, mechanically it now is. And well, I always think a non-perfect car is a perfect car. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, the rear view mirror and the wing mirrors are original. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, okay. You can't just drop, you can't just drop a line like it was a... Um, it was a skip without telling us how bad it was and what state you had it oh, in yeah, when you um, bought the it. The sills were completely rotten. Okay. It wasn't running very well. Yeah. Um, the inside was completely, well, it's not, still not great, but it's, yeah. it was, you know, the inside was a... Was it a running, escape. driving car? Just. Just, okay. Yeah. So, um, so what, what had happened to get to it to that point? Has it just been neglected just over been the years? Or? Yeah, it, yeah. It, just, it just been left. So I took it off and we just put um, a set of new dampers on it. Um, I think we put some spacks on it. We put new discs, pads, and everything else just to get it just to get it rolling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been a, a constant um, uh, bank balance drainer since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, I've probably spent nine. I could have probably bought a nine eleven or nine nine six. Yeah. Of how much I've spent on it, and probably and, and some. Yeah, but you've been on an incredible journey with oh, it, yeah, and it's totally it's, your own. I mean, that's oh yeah, it's a unique worth car. its weight in gold. Yeah, it's, you know, it's 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 a very unique car, mm. and. Um, you know, the, the, the conversion we've done on the engine and stuff. Cool. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's a, there's not, I don't think there's another one in the UK, there may be, but okay. we put ITVs on it, so. Well, let's get to that later. Yeah. That way we've got to keep our viewers watching yeah. the video to get to that juicy bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, 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 it, was, it was a basket case. So you've, you've done body work on the car? Extensively. Um, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> We're talking the whole sills. Yes. The insides were luckily okay. We took yes. the wings off. There was huge holes. Right. Wow. So that's all been yeah, welded yeah. up. Okay. Um, but you know, it, it, it's relatively clean. I'd probably say ninety-five percent rust free mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it's solid. I mean, they're, they're solid cars. And you know, because you've done it, you know it's right. Some people, you know, go. I mean, there are, there are two schools of thought, which is buy it already done, so you don't go through the headache and the expense that's always going to be more than you anticipate or buy a rolling road, a rolling car and do it. As someone who's been down the road of like, of doing it all yourself, is there a particular path that you would recommend to someone who's, well, who's looking to buy a 944? It's a good point. I mean, you know, if you go down this, this route, you kind of know what's been done to it. You're buying an unknown quantity. If mm. you buy a car that's been arrested or whatever, you don't know how deep a restoration that was. Mm. And anyone can show you some receipts. I mean, I've mm. got a big pile of them. Um, but, you know, and also it's the fun of doing it, knowing mm. that you've, been through that um, and also when it breaks down that handy as well you know what to yeah. look for but um, which isn't very often by the way yeah but yeah I mean it's definitely um, you know if you want to get into this you know there's not many that are going to be pristine anyway yeah, yeah. a lot of them have unfortunately been neglected which yeah. is the way boxes are going now isn't it really it is it is and um, you know um, it's, it's part of the fun part of the journey and then you can make something unique at the end of it yeah yeah so would you do it, so here's the question for you, here's the golden question. If you were starting all over again, would you buy a car that had already had the work done, or would you do exactly what you've done and start with a rolling? Work already done, no, not really. Um, no, <laughs> no I'll, I'll definitely do this again. you definitely do this again. Um, yeah, I, I will, um, when I've, um, if my wife is watching this, yeah. um, then hopefully I can have a chat with her when we get back about finding something else, but it's more in the space to keep something, unfortunately, and home oh. is, is of a premium. Yeah. But you know, I'd love to do it again. 
mm. and probably get more involved myself, mm -hmm. getting even more oily, because unfortunately where I live, there's no workspace. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have to borrow space, pay people and everything else, mm. which is where the cost, cost gets sucked up, isn't it, really? Mm. If you can't span it yourself, it's yeah, paying yeah. someone to do that. Labor for sure, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, right, let's get into the nitty gritty of it. So what year is the car? It's an 83, so it's I'll an be 83, taking so it's my, an early uh, car. Yeah, so I'll be taking the logbook to the post office next week mm -hmm. to get the tax free. Um, nice. So yeah, 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 so a bit of money back, so a small win there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can drive it into the middle of London then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No bother. That's true. And um, so what suspension are you running on the car? No, well, now it was running on SPACs, which were yes. very good, and we converted those to coilovers, and it yeah. ran very well. Um, a set of lightning used KWV3s came up. Mm -hmm. Um, at a good price, mm. um, so I snapped those up. They literally had about 100 miles on them. So you've then, got bump and rebound adjustability on those, yes, from yeah, as well the, as height, obviously. As yeah, well. I'm still need to get it dialed in. We've not quite got it right yet. Okay. But um, unfortunately, the set of KWs we bought um, are for a later rear end car. So okay. these originally, because this is an early one, yes, it had the same rear end as a 924. Mm -hmm. And what they did at the factory is they just wang some spacers on. Yeah. And that was, that was the fix. Mm. So we've had to put a wider track rear end uh, whole suspension set up on the back. So right, trailing okay. arms, everything. So, the, the so cheap, different axle as well? Uh, yeah, the whole, whole right, train. Right. So, so it's a later 944 yeah, axle, right? Yeah, so right, right. But at least we can drop the spaces now. Yeah, but to be fair to, to well, to be fair to Porsche, it, the, even with a lot of their 911s, some of them came, quite a few of them came from the factory with spaces as well. So yeah. they've all, they've often, Porsche themselves have often used um, used spacers. Well, I think it was a quick fix because when they obviously widened the back of the car mm. for 944 and 924, they just kept the same setup and yeah, they yeah. just, just wang some spacers on it. Yeah. So my, my cheap KW um, weren't cheap by the time we'd done all of this. <laughs> okay. So, Fair enough. Yeah. But so, now it means that you've got the wheels where you want, the track is right, the geometry is more, yeah. more effective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's very adjustable now mm. um but yeah we i haven't quite got it right yet. yeah so and what, what is it you want to do, do what adjust heights and um yeah get it properly or? properly weighted okay. and everything else i mean we're running about the right height it's slightly nose up actually mm. which i kind of like and we're running a bit of toe out at the front mm -hmm. but we've you're been running going, sorry we're running round goodwood again in a few weeks okay so nice um and are you right you're running quite a bit of negative camber on the rear there yeah um, I kind of just like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, nor normally you'd expect to see more camber on the front than you would on the rear. And here, it's to me, it, to my eye, and you know, what's called my eye is probably not very good, but it looks like you're running more on the rear. Yeah, we are. Mm. So um, I've actually just bought a specialist tool that mm -hmm. you have to get to actually adjust the camber on the back. So we, again, we're just, I'm just sort of playing around. Playing with around and seeing what works. And see, we, you know, do a track day, no, that understeers, so that oversteers, yeah. go back and. Interesting. And so are you running any different anti-roll bars or the other factory roll bars? Uh, stiffer ones on the front. Mm -hmm. We've got upgraded torsion bars. So we put uh -huh. thicker torsion bars in there as well. Yep. Whole thing's polybushed. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a relatively stiff ride. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I don't mind that. I mean, I drove it up to Scotland the back and did the NC500 in it, which is yeah. 1,500 miles from my house. Yeah. Perfectly comfortable. Cool. Nice. You know, if, if you... Um, I don't have an issue with having a, well, I'm coming from an Elise car anyway, so yeah, you know, yeah. I'm used to having a, being a fairly hard ride. But yeah, fair enough. They're, they're very, they ride very well. Okay. Um, and what wheels are we running here? These are figure off, out what they these are. These are for 911 actually. Um, are they? Yeah, and they need a refurb, I know, but I don't like over refurbing stuff. I hey. think if you completely refurb the wheels, it won't go with the car. You, you're preaching is converted. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, generally speaking, my favorite cars are always cars which are dirty and always cars which are used. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm all down with a, with, um, with pat Patina, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, they're a cool, they're a cool wheel. I'm trying to figure out what they are. Are they like Compromotive or? No, they're Rials. Rials. Oh, you don't see many of those. No, but they, they, they sell, they, they do come on 911s. Um, yeah. And they had in period in the 80s, a lot of Mercs and BMWs mm. had them. I just think they suit the car. Yeah, they do. And they so they what, really nice. what, what, size, what size are you running? These are um, 16s, and the reason I did that is th these originally mainly ran on 15-inch cookie curves. Yeah. Um, and it's just a really limited tire choice. Yeah. So I thought I'll go up to 16s. They're slightly fatter at the back now. I think they're two, 
four fives running in the back or two mm. three fives and um, what widths what widths have you got so i've just changed them actually on the um i think these are two one fives on the sorry, front I mean two fives on the front sorry in terms of the wheels so we're looking oh, at what, beg like your a pardon. so there's seven and eight okay i believe and so is that is that a, what, what were they standard do you know seven and seven I think, I think they were actually either seven and a half and seven or just yeah. both seven but they had okay. different options so it's only a slight change really in the width of the width of the wheel have yeah. you noticed much difference i'm guessing you're running yeah, wider I mean, tires as well yeah i mean it just fills the arches better as well yeah yeah it sits better yeah. um in my opinion um but yeah i think i think i just think the wheels really suit the car yeah, i'm no, not they sure do. whether I, I don't know maybe maybe gold in the centers i'm not sure yet the thing is is like i mean yeah okay gold's going to look wicked it always is but at the same time there's a subtlety here and the, the black of the center of the wheels just plays nicely into all the black trim there's that heavy contrast between the black and the white i think that yeah. looks great um and they're painted yeah. with crosses on because i've threaded them aha uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah so i need to uh, i did that to remind me oh yeah to track days go and get them re redone okay <laughs> But um, yeah, and are they so are they a one piece wheel? Yeah, yeah, they're a yeah. one piece wheel. Yeah, but yeah. these um, these have been reprinted actually. I've got to go and pick up another set because I the bought them. Caps. Yeah, there was one missing when I bought them, and the guy was like, "Oh, you'll get one of those easy." And I was yeah, like, yeah, really. Sure. Yeah, two years later, two three years later, I haven't found them. So, so you three D printed the the cap? Yeah, I've got to pick up a new set. I was hoping to get them for today, but I didn't have time to go and get them. Okay. But um, they've all been three D printed, which cool. uh, is cheaper than i think they're about five six hundred dollars a set which yeah, is just about. silly it's great that we can print parts like this nowadays isn't it yeah 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 low I mean, low production numbers are possible whereas before yeah. it just wouldn't be yeah yeah, yeah yeah absolutely awesome okay um and how about brakes any difference there do you know what this the standard brakes are pretty good but i've um kept the calipers we've gone with um slotted uh i think on the front and then we're running Mintex M1144 pads, okay. which make a lot of dust. Yeah, so yeah. I spend a lot of time Well, dust, the dust is good. Dust means it's doing its job. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it's a pain in the arse, but... It yeah. is, but they're a, great, they're a great great, sort of balance between sort mm. of fast road and track. Yeah, and they're not like squealing like pigs when they're cold at traffic no, lights. No, I mean, I have put more track-focused ones on there, and yeah. then, but I do use it on the road as well. Yeah. So it's kind of a good, happy balance between that. I mean, the next job would probably be going bigger brake kit on there yeah. or bigger So what is, what's the upgrade for brakes that you do on this, on a 944? Um, I think you can get like a Wilwood set, which is just, you know, oh, yeah. more, you know bigger calipers okay. and everything else. But do you know what? It stops pretty well. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not the best driver in the world. I have a go, mm. <laughs> but you know, I've, I've, I've wagged the wheel on the, the corners at Goodwood. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 do, I do get involved, but Good man. you know, it, it stops pretty well. I think there's other things I'd rather spend the money on fast. Um, but so, yeah. So you track, I mean, like, what's it called? It's pretty clear that you do, but you track the car. Yeah, um, yeah. We were, I'm trying to do some more with it this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I picked up a license, so I, I want to try and do oh, some nice. hill climbs with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think hill climbs, are, you know, with a bit of a giggle yeah. and doing some sprints as well. Mm. Super cool. So what tracks, uh, what tracks are your favorite tracks? What's a good track for a 944 for this car? It's, it's, to be fair, it's been around Goodwood mostly. Yeah. Um, it's a great I'm, circuit, super fast flowing. It's just that it has no runoff. It always makes me a bit anxious. Oh, no, no. That way you can hit a bank, that way you can hit an aeroplane. Yeah, so, pretty much. So, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, which we've, um, yeah. in fact, actually. But it's a great circuit. I love it. I came off a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is cracked. It's so a. The overrider oh, yeah. is um, all God, you got away with nothing there. Yeah, it's pushed the bumper in slightly. It was actually there, driver's fault. Was it? He overtook me mid-corner, and I didn't Shit. make the corner. I was on the wrong side of the track, so I didn't make the corner and went through about four brake boards. Fuck. Um, yeah, but I managed to keep it on the black stuff. But Yeah. Um, you're not supposed to. I think on track days, you're not, you're not allowed to overtake on the corners. No, but I was, I was quite surprised when he was there, and I was like, oh, he won't overtake me there, so I positioned the car, yeah, and it was... Yeah put me on the right hand side for a left hand corner yeah. so i think rma allow overtaking on tracks yeah. but i mean the, the standard of driving there is a bit of a different level but most track days they don't, they no, don't allow that no, so i was put into i wasn't expecting him yeah. to be there but luckily um it's the last corner so it's the fast the end of the fast straight so yeah. you're breaking from i don't know 120 down to about 60 yeah. so it yeah. could have it could have been a very messy day <laughs> well to be fair it's just another battle score so yeah, yeah. I did yeah, actually yeah. fix it, and then I dropped it, put it on, so I cracked it again. So I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm have to like, redo it. Yeah, yeah. But right. Um, I can't wait anymore. Can we flip the bonnet? Can we have a look yeah, inside? Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. 
probably still oily under there, but... <laughs> well, <sighs> engines tend to be. Yeah. Yeah. So this is GRP. Mm -hmm. oh, is that aftermarket or is that... Yeah, we had to. Yeah. Because of, um, of this. So <laughs> when we were trying okay. to tune it, yeah, yeah. the airflow was making a huge difference. Really? Of like bonnet down, bonnet up, 10%, Amazing. 10 horsepower difference. Wow. That much. So we've, we've got this uh, aftermarket fiberglass panel. So where does um, that come from? Uh, I think they're called Club Sport or something. Okay. They make a lot of panels for Porsches and 944s. So it's it kind of... It's Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just up the road from here, I think. Are they? Uh, yeah, okay. they've been around since 1972, those guys, if not a bit earlier, actually. Right, I think they're okay. the longest established Porsche specialists in the yeah, country. Yeah, they sell, like, cup mirrors and yeah, yeah. fiberglass panels yeah. and all sorts but of things. But they stuff. also do, I believe they also do mechanical work and so on as well, yeah. Yeah. They're quite under the radar, subtle. Yeah. yeah so, so was this, was, are there any 944s that came with this kind of grill? No, no this, this, is actually, this is actually off a 924 Turbo. Oh, interesting, okay. So that's where it's come from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but because this is an early 944, that's the one we could get that fitted. Interesting. <laughs> and I was going to get a new badge, and then I thought, do you know what, you can't, you've got to put the old badge on there. You, hmm, that's I, totally my philosophy as well. Like, even when I restored car, I almost, I feel like the last thing, the, the thing that you mustn't ever change is the, is the original badge. That's no. always been my, prefer, my, my preference, so I totally Absolutely. agree. Appreciate the converter there as well. So, um, so these, these are actually removable on the later cars because mm -hmm. this is an early one. There was, it was about 80 spot welds. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to cut it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's made a hell of a difference to the, to the performance. 10 horsepower just in that alone. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah. Just getting some more colder air in there. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's, um, was it the right conversion? I'm not sure. <laughs> but, right, okay. But, but it, it looks good, sounds good. It does have more torque, it has more shove. So you're going to have to talk me through what's going on in here because that certainly doesn't look standard to my eye. No, so it's, yeah. it's running four independent throttle bodies yeah. um, off there. So, you know, hopefully you, you're getting four times the amount of air and hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we did have, it was blowing flames out the trumpets at one point. Um, so we tried various different filters that it set fire to. Um, before we got ITG to make this okay. bespoke for it. Really? Yeah. So what was the problem? Uh, a multitude of things, mainly just tuning, because no okay. one's really done this before on yeah, a yeah. 2.5 yeah. NA. I don't Have think they not? Really, no. So this was uncharted? So, yeah, uncharted territory. I mean, yeah, this yeah. was actually a kit we bought from a guy who apparently sold lots of them, but apparently hadn't um, tested any so of them. This, no. Gosh. So we had to change everything. So we've had to relocate a lot of the, well, the, now the oil air separator is totally bespoke. We had to yeah. make one of those. We had to then we thought we might as well put a catch can on there. Yes. We've had to move everything. Yeah. So it's it's turned out to be a hell of a big job. But it's it's unique. Um, and so the internals of the engines are exactly the same. It's literally just that you put ITVs on it. Well, we right? did a refresh on that. So we've put um, okay. turbo springs in there. We've mm -hmm. got um, an upgraded camshaft from Have a company you? called okay. Augment. So yeah. Augment do a lot with 944s. Um, and now it's also running uh, a standalone ECU yeah. for motorsports. So it's got a higher lift cam, basically, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. it's and the Different package duration. we bought came with a yeah it's motorsports UK um not motorsports UK motorsports ECU mm -hmm. ME two two one because there's not there wasn't many options for that either. Right, right. Um, the weak point of these normally is the old DME Montronic system or the um, airflow meter, which should have been about here. Mm. You know, they're quite restrictive things of the car. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly made it sound good and it sounds, so sounds faster than it is. So <laughs> was, this, was this ITV set up like a bolt-on a bolt on system or did you have to do some fab work to make it work? Yeah, I mean, it was supposedly bolt-on, but it wasn't. It never is, but no. <laughs> I did, uh, no. just in case I asked the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you've got, what have you got there? You've got like a billet plate, billet, um, stack there that's yep. welded then you've got cast yeah and then ITVs. trumpets on there and then um yeah, yeah. And so it's running bigger injectors top. as well in there yeah and i can see you've got a different fuel rail a billet fuel yep. rail in there as well yeah so what's the camera like is it does the has the um peak rev range um uh peak revs changed how drivable is it yeah we've, we've stuck about another 750 on the um top end okay um, so but now you can plug your laptop in and then you can customize everything now, mm. which is great. So how many, so, what's, what's Redline on it now? 
just over 6,000, just over 6,100 6, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, and drivability I mean, is good. It's got loads more torque. Yeah. It's, it, it does. It pulls really well. Yeah. Um, you know, a, yeah. have I have I increased the horsepower? I've probably replaced the ones that ran away um, <laughs> yeah. over the last forty years. Um, but no, it's it it has improved it. Um, I've actually got a supercharger in my shed as well. Whoa, which, okay, that's you know, a whole other project. Going nicely there, yeah. but then I'd have to ditch this. Is that so a Baines charger or a Roots charger? It's uh, an Eaton. Um, Roots charger. Out, Eaton, yeah, yeah, I think they came out of a, a SLK or something. Yeah, okay. But um, Augment do quite a lot of conversions or have done more conversions to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think a few cars that run in Porsche series have. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I won't talk about it more than the nugget I'm going to say, but I've been involved with supercharging 911 engines. Right. Um, which is a whole different project that will come up in conversation another time. Yeah. But it's, okay. um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. And get boost leaks are your biggest, are your biggest, um, uh, are your biggest challenge. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we looked at turbo and then, you know, supercharger, that was really Then this idea came out and I was like, well, this looks simpler. <laughs> More full eye. Famous um, last words. Yeah, famous last yeah. words and then ding, 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 <laughs> later yeah. on. So... But yeah, it's it's. But what we've ended up with is something that sounds great, goes well, mm. and you know, most of the time when you open the bonnet, they're like, oh, I've seen that before, yeah, or, yeah. And, and it and it looks nice. I mean, I yeah, sometimes run it without the filter so people can yeah, yeah. see the trumpets. And, and I'm sure it's um, I'm sure it sounds great as well. The induction noise must be great. Yeah, well, we cut the middle bit of the exhaust out. So Have you? so yeah, fifty okay. percent of my neighbours love me, fifty percent hate me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what you got rid of one of the silences? Yeah, so okay. we've got the. It's got a dance back box on yeah. it, but the middle bit we've just got rid of. So overall, how much it. horsepower do you think you gained? <sighs> and talk. About two. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I'm uh, probably about somewhere between fifteen and twenty. I need yeah, to roll yeah. and road it again. Yeah. But the torque. The thing is, is also like we talk. Sorry, gone. Sorry. The, the torque I think has in, improved more Interesting. than the actual horsepower. Yeah, yeah. But it just it just pulls a lot stronger. This is the thing we get caught up very often with conversations about horsepower and torque. And actually, what's more important isn't necessarily the amount of horsepower torque gained, but what the actual curve looks like, because that's your drivability. Uh, yeah, I was just about to say exactly the same thing. It's, yeah. it's more about the drivability of it. Exactly. You know, how does and it's it that feel? curve. It's all in that curve. Because if your horsepower suddenly comes in a peak, you know, and then disappears, you know, then it's completely useless. Well, this keeps going. And obviously, with the cam as well, we've got in there. Yeah. Um, when that comes on, it, it, yeah, it puts a big grin on your face. Yeah. I'm sure it does. Very cool. So what, um, so we've got a new catch tank that you've got there. And um, what's called, you've got a strut brace across the top there. Who's that made by? Weichers? Weichers Sport? Yep. Yeah. Witcher Sport? Another club member. Didn't want it. 30 pounds. I'll have that. Nice. Job done. But yeah, so that, that's, you know, we've, we've done a lot of stiffening on the car. Yeah. yeah. And put in the, um, you know, even put in the, um, scaffolding in the back has yeah. made it a bit stiffer. That's it. Interesting. And uh, you've got good adjustability there on the KWs as well. Yeah. For your, um, uh, for your camber. Again, we, we, again, it just needs fettling. Mm. Um, of time of uh, fettling it and going around the track, see what happens, and then yeah. coming back and changing some more bits and bobs in the settings and see, see, cool. where, we, see where we get. Are you going to do the... Um, there's, a, there's a Porsche track day um, run by a friend of mine called Jay called um, Flat Six. It's a flat six show. Oh, right, yeah, I, um, I missed out on that last year. I didn't apply in time, but yeah. I've, I've um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably apply for that one this year. Yeah, we, yeah. I, I normally do retro rides as well. Okay, sure. Which is always quite a fun no, show. No, just, I'm just saying that because I would call, I'd love to see it on track and I'd love to hear it. I'm, and I'm going to do flat six this year. Okay. I'm hoping that I'm going to get my 993 up and running by that point. There's quite a lot of work that needs to be done, but I, I will find something that's running <laughs> and make it down there. Um, so yeah, if you're it. there, I'd, I'd love to. You can, you can take it. You it. can take it round. I always feel really anxious driving other people's cars, you know. <laughs> so um, I think I'll, I'll get as much ple well, I'll get a lot much as much pleasure because I won't be anxious watching you do your thing and hearing it go around. Um, but yeah, there's nothing like. I, seeing I, a I car normally win the best sound of the day. Do you? Um, when down there. Right. Well, it basically means that we're we're not going to finish this video without you starting up the car. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what exhaust are you? Oh, so yeah, yeah, you took out the silence. Yeah. You so said. you just yeah. and just a Danks yeah. box at the back. Nice. Very cool. Can we have um, can we have a look inside? Yeah. So uh, apologies about the inside. I mean, it's 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 a work in progress. No apologies necessary. So, All cars are work in progress, especially yeah, when they're I mean, older when ones. The, the seats were totally shot when, when yeah. I got it, and I thought, right, well, I want to put some harnesses anyway. Put some subtle ones in there. Mm -hmm. So you know, these OMP ones, they're they're super comfortable. Mm. 
they're really comfortable. The carpet was shot, so I got hold of another carpet and put that in there. Nice. Um, but yeah, feature on this car that not many cars have got. This has actually got an eject button. Eject button. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that actually... Um, <laughs> what is that? Can I take a seat? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, push again. God, I tell you what, it smells good in here. Sorry. You know, earlier on, we were, we were outside of the car and I could smell the interior from outside of the car. It's got that, that wonderful Porsche distinctive smell, really. Yeah. Yeah, it's slightly less um, oily than the air-cooled cars. Those sound, those really do smell a bit more oily. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a 40-year-old yeah, no, car. I mean, you, you can put about 20 air freshers in it and it'll still... My wife yeah. won't go in it anymore. She's like, it smells. Nah, it smells, it smells <laughs> amazing. Like the smell. And the thing is, is that's, 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 yeah, it's, it's so part of it. And if you, when you restore uh, an interior, you lose that, you know? Um, no, it's a huge part of it. Well, what a cool the cars were shot, so I've just recapped them for now. I'm gonna, okay. I'm actually gonna get some nice ones made with maybe a tartan or houndstooth or something, mm -hmm. and do the same with the seats. Mm -hmm. And the rear seats are gonna go. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, my kids are too big for them now anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna ditch those. Um, but this actual um, roll cage, I had it made specifically so it can come in and out. Did you? So right. It, wow. It, so it bolts into the um, hard points for the seat belts. Brilliant. So, so it's mo not, no modifications whatsoever. Well, just yeah. I mean, if I ever want to sell it in front or put the seats back in, yeah. you can, and it's not completely the. Do you know what you you've paved the way for quite a few other people because now if somebody wanted to do ITBs, you know what's it called, and the ECU and the setup and everything else, yeah, you, you've you've done a lot of the hard work for them. Yeah. And the same thing with this cage, like what's it called, is something that's fully developed and is now off the shelf. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so well, the eject button. You. It always it's it's a brave person to be the first person to do something. You know, it's very easy afterwards to get in there afterwards. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, 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 been, yeah. it's been a journey, not all, not all fun, yeah. um, as, yeah. as, as, as any of them. No, I, I get that, totally. Yeah. Okay, right, I interrupted you really rudely when you were telling That's me about right. the eject button, so, so tell me more about that. No, well, it, it made friends with a tree. Um, huh? <laughs> so I was, in fact, we were going over to one of the Stuttgart South meetings at, yeah. at Goodwood, and it mm. was a really stormy day, and I was kind of about to, about to turn around because the weather was not very good and I was driving down an A road and an oak tree blew over across the road when I was doing about 40 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So I was like, accelerate or brake. So I just jammed the anchors on and the very branch straight through the front of the car. Fuck. Um, and I, yeah, it came through the windscreen right there. So I ducked and it just missed my face. And um, I thought the car was toast. Um, I thought you were toast. Well, and me as well. But yeah, the, the lady <laughs> you had was driving, reactions the, the lady to, to driving to the other that. way on the other side of the road was like, I didn't want to look in your car in case I didn't want to know what I was going to find. But um, That's some pretty lightning reactions to, to duck that quickly. Well, you know, I think sometimes you just, just do things, don't you? You know, now I'm expecting you to have lightning reactions on track as well. <laughs> you can actually, dodge I'm, trees. I'm, 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 <laughs> you, please, please lower your expectations. <laughs> but yeah, so okay. I thought the car was toast. It yeah, took yeah. a massive branch right across there and across the front. Yeah. Um, and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was a hell of a thing. I, I thought the car was going to be a write-off. Mm. Um, this outside metal um, frame was anything that bent. Mm -hmm. um, it took full impacts right across it, and they said the car was fine. And I was like, wow. So mm. they are so strong, these cars. Gosh. So a little bit of paintwork, a bit of bodywork, which is why the front looks nice, because it's been yeah. repainted. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Just, just quickly, before I forget, because I will forget, um, for, for people who are out there who have got 944s and wanting to do the conversion that you've done, what was the garage that did the work for you? Um, there's actually a local specialist, um, a friend of mine, and they are called Cable and Classics. Cable and Classics. Yeah, and um, they mainly do Lotus and Mini rebuilds. Uh -huh. But you know, this I've had to find somebody locally that yeah. wanted to take this on. Mm. So you know, they've um, been pretty good in plumbing all this together. They mainly do a lot of um, MX-5 engine conversions mm -hmm. into classics as well. Mm -hmm. um, but what they're known for is mainly Lotus Cortinas and Minis. Mm. Um, and now Porsches, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there's not there's not a huge stack of them down in East Sussex, yeah. where where I am. Okay. Um, and you know, it was unknown territory, so you know, a lot of Porsche specialists wouldn't have known what to do about putting an ITB yeah, set up yeah, on yeah. it anyway. Yeah. No, they wouldn't have. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've got a Momo prototype wheel. Always looks has its place inside a, inside a Porsche. They always look great. Um, yeah, I'm guessing a slightly smaller diameter than standard. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they're great wheels and mm. they just suit the car so well. 
Very cool. And then here, is this the standard fascia? No, because it looks like it's got some screws in it. It's like a, the, the fascia you've got over here. No, it's standard. Is it standard? Yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. Oh yeah, because it, yeah, it matches with this one here. Yeah, so we, and this okay. car you had on the other week, this obviously got yeah. the, the late interior. This is yeah. the uh, very early interior, mm. so square dash. And I kind of like that. I kind of wanted something that was a bit mm. period earlier looking. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah it's a nice place to be. Feels very driver focused, like every good Porsche does. Um, very cool. And what what gear knob have we got here? So um, yeah, I mean the original on these, they're just held in with a couple of clips. And they're not they're not great. So I wanted something that perhaps felt a bit nicer. Mm. Yeah. Um, so there's a guy I think it's called, built by Basil or something. Yeah. Like so funnily yeah. enough, yeah, we were just talking about him on on a previous episode. Yeah. So he did yeah. that for me. Really nice. Really nice. And um, yeah, they're available from Stuttgart Classica, who are trading a Megaphonics later this year, our, uh, our Porsche event. Um, and um, is that standard? Because that feels very... Um... It's got short shifter kit on it, okay. and we've changed all the bushings. And Yeah, it feels really slick and really tight. It is, that. It is very quite direct. nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's really not many nice. things we haven't looked at on this, <laughs> on this car. Okay, and you've also got, I see you've got an AEM um, gauge here on the, on well, the yeah, dash. Well, yeah, we put that in. Um, I think I've cooked the sensor again, but it was really to help with kind of tuning the engine because yeah. and just seeing what was going on because, yeah. you know, we're changing the whole air fuel mixture, all of that sure. jazz into the engine. So something to try and keep an eye on it, but... I'm hoping, touch wood, we've got it in a good place now, but it's taken mm. a lot of tuning to get it where it is. Mm. And whose squiggle have we got here? On that the is uh, Richard Atwood. Is it? Okay, great. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know who he is, but mm. um, he, he very kindly, I, I bumped into him at Goodwood and he was just standing around and I just went over and started chatting to him. And um, I, we might see it later on, but I, I did a painting of his car mm -hmm. and we started talking about it and he invited me up to his house. No way. So, what so a legend, that, what a nice guy. Yeah, he's, he's an absolute gent and he's, yeah. he's, he's such a nice guy. And he just, yeah, I'll come up to my house. And I was like, oh, okay. So he said, I'll come and sign your artwork for you. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, can you just sign my car while you're there? And he was like, yeah. okay, no problem. <laughs> so, legend. Yeah, he was an absolute gentleman. Nice, it's amazing to hear how approachable he was and how charming you must have been to get an invite to his house. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and I've, he's, he's now got one of my pictures up in his kitchen, so... Yeah, um, <laughs> fair which enough. Is, which is... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really nice. I'm really, I'm really impressed by how focused this is. The, dry, the, the seat's really nice, it holds you in place. The steering wheel's just where you want it to be. The gear knob is literally right there. Um, and yeah, the movement, it's, it's very slick. That feels really, really positive. I thought there was more to it than literally just the bushes and, the, and a short shift kit, to be fair. But it um, goes to show that, you know... Sometimes the simpler, the bushes do make a big difference as well. Getting yeah, it. just yeah. you know, tightening everything up. Yeah. But the um, yeah, I mean those, those chairs are super comfy actually. Yeah, they, they are. They need re-upholstering again now. And I bet on longer trips as well they work as well because you've got the right bolstering there on the hips and the shoulders, but they look like they would be comfortable for longer trips as well. Yeah, I mean the, the, the NC500 was 1500 miles and mm. I was fine when I got out the other, <laughs> other end. Mm. I did drive it like a rally stage, but <laughs> um, and. Um, I see you've got uh, a nice reference to Steve McQueen and, um, and Le Mans I'm there. I'm glad you picked that up, because yeah. not many people know that. But, yeah. Um, well, he bankrupted Solar Productions, his production company, making that film, apparently, yeah, from what well, I understand. I mean, I like the story. The story is, isn't it? They were running so far up the running order, weren't they, at Le Mans at one point, with their right. camera car. And, <laughs> you know, and if they hadn't come in, apparently if they hadn't come in to change film, no, they'd, really? have, they'd have finished even higher at the rankings Jesus. as well, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible movie when you think about it, that film. It's, just, it's, become, uh, it's become something else, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit yeah. obsessed with it, if I'm honest. It is, it is just beautiful. And, and it's, it's one of those things that you can tell was made by an enthusiast, for enthusiasts, yeah. without any corporate interference, and that's exactly why it bombed and didn't yeah. do well. It but it's wonderful that a piece of artwork like that can be made. I don't want to get teary-eyed about it, but to me, that is, that is just a piece of artwork. That film is just so... Perfect, I, from I was, an enthusiast standpoint. I was lucky enough to go to the, um, to the classic last year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, it was wonderful taking this there. And mm. um, I think it was the weekend when all of the Paris riots were going on, so there was no gendarme was anywhere. So, <laughs> so we, yeah, I did do a few faster spirited laps of the public sure. bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with, the with the soundtrack on, which yeah. is probably a bit geeky, but 
you know, I was I was very happy with this. Oh, didn't see. we only do geeky on this channel. <laughs> we don't we we don't do you know. Yeah. We, we don't do. Uh, wraps and a straight pipe exhaust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get it through the nose for that one, I know. Anyway, um, right. Um, I, I got to mention it again. I mention it every time I see a Porsche with this kind of detail, but the curve of the class here, just, you know, on the Targas, the transaxle cars, I just have a thing for curved glass. It's just, it's such a beautiful aesthetic. It really is. I've always yeah. been a fan of the whole shape of the car. They, mm. they, I think there's, they're fairly unique and it gets a lot of attention wherever it goes because mm. people, A, don't know what it is to begin with. Mm. You sometimes get a nice Mazda. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's fine. And they're always support. But, but a lot of people like the look of it. Yeah, yeah. And 911s are beautiful, and obviously that's your thing as well. Mm. But I think because you don't see so many of these around. Anymore. Yeah. My, my thing is, like, yes, I'm into air-cooled cars and I'm into 911s. But in truth, actually, what I'm into is that's the car side of it but actually what I'm into is I'm into enthusiasm I'm into being around people that kind of their enthusiasm for whatever it is that they're into is infectious like um it's like it's like when you're in school like it's not what you're being taught it's who you're being taught by like I had no interest in some, some of the subjects that I was taught at school but I loved them because of a specific teacher and so for me with cars it's it's the same thing, you know, if, if, if I'm around someone that's really passionate about their car, like you are, it's infectious. So for me, it's an attitude. It's not what you drive, it's, it's the attitude you have with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it goes beyond the car, doesn't it? It does, it does. Like, one, one you know, a, a, a while ago, someone was kind enough to ask me why I did what I do. Um, and I'm still trying to figure it out. We're all winging it in life. <laughs> but... I think last year there was a moment that kind of really rang true to me and there was this kid who came up and he said, I'm 18, I started coming to this event when I was 13 and I brought my 924 to this event and it's my first Porsche. Wow. And that was really like, <laughs> you know, that was super cool. And to think that I may have paid a small part in, you know, what's called his, 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 his love affair for Porsche from what he said, you know, um, was, was very heartwarming and that's the whole reason. You don't do it for, if you don't do it for those kind of reasons, you're doing it for the wrong reasons in my mind. Well, it's what works for me anyway. Yeah, um, no, no, you, you're absolutely bang on. But yeah. And, um, you know, my, my kids absolutely love, can we go in the porch? Can we go in the porch? Yeah. Wherever, wherever we go anywhere. Yeah. Do the lights, do the lights. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's the other thing. Yeah, exactly. But and I mean, this, this kid, like he, you know, I asked him loads of questions about his 924 and the enthusiasm he had. And he was like, I'm going to do this trip. I'm going to do that trip. I'm going to put on this suspension. I'm going to do this thing. And it's just infectious. Being around someone who's really passionate about the subject matter is infectious. Yeah, I think these yeah. cars do that. It's quite a unique brand for doing yeah. that. For sure. Um, you know, for sure. I don't mm. think there's many other brands. The more I've got involved in it, um, you know, it's. I think they're a bit of a different breed. Mm. What I like about it is the exclusivity side of it. You know, like you get everything from like this 924 um, that this chat brought last year, all the way up to like the hippie car that was here, um, which is a 25 million pound car, and what it means is you get people from all different walks of life and there isn't room for snobbism or egos or it certainly isn't here. Um, and you just get this, this amazing wide um, demographic of people who are united by this one specific passion for, for Porsche. Because I think like other brands like Ferraris and Lamborghinis, you're into five figures to get into the minimum. Yeah. With Porsche, you can go all the way from like a 986 Boxster, which is like, I don't know, a few grand and it's a fantastic car, all the way up to the multi-million pound collector cars. Uh, one and a half grand I paid for this. Oh, it's so much car for it. Um, and, you know, I threw a couple of grand at it to begin yeah, with, yeah. just yeah. to get it running. But, you know, how are you going to do that anywhere else with... I mean, I've spent... <laughs> obviously, my wife might be watching this, I won't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I've... Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's not a £1,500 car at the end of the day, is it? Because the right. amount of money you then paid to get it into where it is. I mean, if you'd have walked into one of these mm. in with all this on it, you know, you're talking a lot more. Yeah, of course. And they're thankfully rising in value a bit more now, but I yeah. don't really mind that. I don't care. I'm never going to sell it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I drive it, I drive it hard. Um, I want to pass it on to my kids. Good man. Um, you know, they, they fight over it all the time. Um, you know, who, who, who's going to get the car when you die, dad? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, hmm. and that, that's what I like about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. And it's just, you know, they just look so much better than a lot of the modern stuff out there. Yeah, and it's so much more interesting, and there's so much, it's, yeah, it's so much more intriguing. And 
compared it's, to the it's a weird before. journey where I don't either get somebody take a photo or wave but you don't always get somebody who mm. will pull over and go oh I love your car or whatever it's, it's very rare that doesn't happen yeah, yeah. so I like to think I'm doing a service um, for the community yeah. of just driving this around because I don't actually get sick because I'm driving it but everybody else gets to see it so. <laughs> <laughs> this is true this is true yeah. But I mean, cars like this, you know, they tell such a story and you know, what's called, that's why it caught my eye. And when Andy suggested that, I was like, yeah, I've, I've got to meet the owner of this car and, and we've got to have this car in for sure. Um, that's what this is all about, really. It's about people at the end of the day. The car's, the car's got four wheels, a steering wheel and a pedal box. But the fact of the matter is, is it doesn't move without the squishy bit behind the wheel. So, yeah. you know, that is the vital key and the interesting part of the cars is not just the car themselves, but really the people behind them. Right, let's, um, let's pop open this bonnet because I've seen in here a painting that I'd like to talk to you about and understand a little bit more. So you're, um, you're, an, art, you're an artist as well, clearly. Yeah, I yeah. mean, um, that was actually my first calling in life. So I, I trained it? actually to be a technical illustrator and draftsman. Mm -hmm. So drawing engines with a pencil. Mm. Then somebody invented the Mac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it all moved on to um, computers and I just didn't interest me. You know, mm. I'd, I'd rather sit there with a paintbrush and a pencil mm. rather than you know sit there on a Mac computer so I kind of lost interest in it um, as a career mm. um, ironically I ended up working on a laptop anyway um, <laughs> so, so I should have stuck with it yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, oh yeah I've just this is a recent purchase I've managed to get hold of a proper black print to uh, I've got a little amp in there at the moment. Hang on, I so. haven't finished talking about your paintings yet. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So yeah, so this is, um, this is obviously the Salzburg car, the 917 doesn't get much more iconic than that. There's a lot of movement in the, in, in, the, in the painting, but then there's a lot of stillness as well. I'm probably talking absolute rubbish, but I don't know. Yeah, it looks, I think the stance of it makes it look like it's, it's moving at speed, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, know it's nice. Thank you. I mean, um, really this nice. is all done with, with airbrush. Is it? So right, um, okay. it's watercolour and airbrush. Right, right, cool. So we do, I do drawings from photographs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, it's all masked with clear film and then Super. literally with a airbrush and watercolour. And Very a bit, cool. a bit of paintbrush uh, yeah. skill in there as well. But, and then, yeah, this, again, Richard kindly, Mr. Atwood very, very kindly signed these for me. Very cool. So, um, yeah, I've got Derek Bell's car in here as well. In fact, um, I painted that a few oh, yeah? months ago, which was the... I'll show you in a moment, the, which is the 924, which ran at Le Mans. Mm. Oh, the, um, um, I think we had it here during Megaphonics, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this, oh, sorry, this is the... 934, very yeah. cool, Valent car. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And the Atwood one? Yeah, so let me grab that out. All right. All right. Oh, no, this is the right way around. So this sort of stuff, sort mm. of stuff. Yeah, I took a picture of that actually at Goodwood, mm -hmm. and then um, drew it from the photograph. Nice. Again, airbrush and watercolor. So do you take commissions? I do. Yeah. It's just again, it's just yeah, it's just it been is. it's just been time, yeah, <laughs> as yeah. you rightly know. Yeah. yeah. That's the car that um, was the I think that was the one that was a test bed for this engine. Yes. Before they bought it out to market, yeah. and they called it a 94 with actually 944 engine in it. So the car was at uh, Megaphonics a few years ago, and it was restored by Porsche um, in the UK, which was unheard of for a um, for a factory racing car, if I remember correctly. Some internet nerd out there is going to catch me out on that yeah. one, but I'm pretty sure. And the person that one of the people that worked on it was a guy called Andy Wexham, oh, okay. um, who was a really talented mechanic and did a lot of my mechanical work. Unfortunately, he's based up in in Yorkshire, so it's it's not as as uh, he, I can't get him down here often enough. But um, yeah, he worked on the car as well. Very cool. Thanks yeah, so that was that's they, they entered three cars, I think, um, an American one, a German one, and a British mm -hmm. one. And Derek Bell actually drove for the U.S. team weirdly. Ah, so maybe it wasn't so, the U.S. one then. It looked very similar yeah, to this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they just had different flags on. Yes. But I, yes. I chose this one because it was the one Derek Bell drove. Yeah, sure. And I, sure, I bumped sure. into him at Le Mans uh, uh -huh. last year. Yeah. I was chatting to him about it. So. Hopefully, if you're out there, Derek, you can sign this one for me. Yeah. I'll send you one in the post. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you said you got a you got a black punk radio. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so at the moment, I'm just running a Bluetooth amp mm. because I just plug my phone in and away you go. Sure, sure. Um, but I wanted to go back to sort of in period in there mm. as well. So I've managed to get hold of a radio cassette FM. The only thing with cassettes is that apparently the um, the cassettes uh, the tape eventually deteriorates over time. It's not like vinyl or CD that lasts forever. I the know. eventually do. I know, but um, yeah, it's still retro, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just no, of course, of course. Yeah. I think no. I've probably got the cocktail soundtrack 
and yeah. not seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably nice. to put in there. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, I showed my child one of the cassettes and they, they didn't really know what it was. <laughs> to explain <laughs> what, what yeah. it was. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you so much for bringing down Absolute the car. Pleasure. That's all we've got time um, for today. Um, but I really hope... Um, I really hope to catch you at a track day sometime. Actually, before we do that, can we, can we start it? Can we hear it? Yeah, if that's yeah okay. sure. Um, yeah, I just want to hear that, uh, that induction set up <clears throat> as well. Hmm. Obsessed with finding neutral. Yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's all right, isn't it? That's great. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, you can definitely hear the, uh, the throttle bodies and the, uh, the induction noise there. Yeah. Yeah, that does sound very good. Yeah, I look forward to hearing that on a full chat on Overrun <laughs> as well. That would yeah. sound awesome. Um, yeah, very cool. You get lots of bangs and pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Dude, again, thank you so much for bringing the car oh, in. I appreciate you come, you've come for, for a fair old distance, come up all the way up to see us. Yeah, but you get to drive um, the car. Yeah, and uh, I definitely look forward to, um, to, to seeing it out on track, hopefully, at um, Flat State yeah, or another yeah, event. Yeah, I'll, I'll get onto that, actually. Yeah, yeah, um, do, 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 do. You've rem reminded me. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's back out again at Goodwood in a, in a few weeks, Super. hopefully, so... Um, hopefully it won't hit anything this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. yeah. Good. Nice. Excellent. Thanks, dude. Pleasure.